Hello, my name is Ben Sayer. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of Family Tree Maker 2012. Now, the interface to Family Tree Maker is pretty simple. It's broken up into some components that, if you understand what they are and how they work together, it'll make your genealogy work in this product much easier. The first thing that you may notice here is that we've got this toolbar at the top. This toolbar is how you select what Family Tree Maker calls workspaces. Workspaces are just groupings of things that you can do related to people, places, media, sources, publishing, and web searching. And this one that's selected right now, the plan. Below that is a, is a menu bar. The menu bar will be there under each of the workspaces. Some of the workspaces will add an extra item to the menu. Within this plan workspace, we have this tab called New Tree. And if we had a tree open, we would have another tab next to it called Current Tree. But right now, it's just New Tree. And this gives us three options for how we can get started with a new tree. The first one, the selected one here, says Enter What You Know. And you just fill in the information and keep going. The next one is to import from an existing tree. So if you have a family tree file from another program, you can import that here. And also, the third option is downloading from Ancestry. So clicking on this, if you have an Ancestry.com account, it will list your trees and allow you to open them and link them to Family Tree Maker 2012, or not link them if you'd prefer not to. Now from the file menu, I can open a tree, or since I have up here in this box a list of my family tree files, I can open one from here. Now I'm going to open this Sayer family file. Now that's going to open me in the people view, and I want to finish showing you the plan view, so I'm just going to click back here on this plan workspace button on the toolbar. And you can see now this current tree tab has showed up, and just within here we have statistics about the current tree, including one of, the inter one of the important statistics on here, which is when this tree was last backed up. You've got information about the status of this tree with respect to whether it's uploaded to Ancestry or not and whether it's linked. And then you've got an Ancestry web dashboard to keep you up to date on what's going on in your Ancestry account with uh, emails from other people researching your relatives, that sort of thing. And then down below here, there are tasks, a place to keep track of tasks that are generic to your genealogy. In other words, not specific to an individual. Next is the people workspace. Now this opens with this pedigree view here in, that has a prominent place on this workspace. This pedigree view is, a, is the way to navigate within your tree by using some arrows. So if I hover over a person, we've got this left-facing arrow. And clicking that makes that person the root person. And you can see here this person right here that has this green background on their bar is the root person for this current pedigree view. If I, There's also this triangle here that's solid, and that indicates that this person has descendants. At the other end, there are hollow triangles to indicate that there are, are no ancestors in this family tree beyond this person, and solid ones to indicate that there are ancestors beyond this person. Over on the right, we have information about the selected person. So if I just click one of these, it'll change this, but it did not make that person root. I would need to click this arrow to move them over to make them root. But it does update the information that's in this little mini person view that allows me to um, view and update the basic facts about that person. And it also updates this screen which shows the parents and spouse and the spouse's parents as well as children of that union. And so I can select back to my father by clicking there. And there's some more triangles to know about which are down here. An empty triangle similar to the ancestor one means that this person has no descendants in this family tree file. A solid one would indicate that that person does have descendants. 
And then this little house indicates that this is the home person. I want to show you one other thing about these triangles, and that is if I click on John Calvin Sayer, so I went up the tree, here's one of those solid ones, so it indicates that Edward Sayer has descendants in this family tree. Then there's also this little gold arrow, and this arrow indicates that this person is along the direct line of descent from this person to the home person, which in this case is me. So I can follow this down, and that'll take me down to John Henry Sayer, and if I do the same thing, find the little gold arrow, and click on that, it'll take me to my father, and then if I click the home, it'll go to me. Now I've got enhanced nodes turned on, which is this feature with a checkbox right here. And that's what that's doing is displaying pictures and birth and death dates. If I uncheck that, you'll see that those go away. I like having them on. This pedigree view also will show you a different uh, number of generations, depending on where you have this slider set to. I keep it at four. And I've found that I can actually get five on here if I minimize this tab down here. That shows me five generations. And I can get this back simply by clicking on that tab, and it brings it back up. Now over on the left, you can see an index of all the people in your family file. And this little house next to this name indicates that this is the home person for this tree. And that would be me. If I want to go to someone else in this tree, like John Calvin Sayer, I can just click on that person one time and it makes them the root person. There's also a quick way to get back to the home person, and that's right up here in this little title bar for the index, and that is clicking this home button, and that returns you to in the index to that person and also makes them the root person. Now you can change what information is viewed within this index by clicking here, and you can change what sort order is for the index there. You can also filter this, this list of people. And below that, you've got buttons for viewing bookmarks for frequently accessed people. You can add bookmarks for them to make it easier to find them. And then you can also uh, view the history for the recently accessed individuals in the family tree file. And this one clicks back to the index itself. And if you just want to start typing a name to find someone, you can do that here. So I just start type Dexter, and it went to the first Dexter in the index file. Let me just go home there. So that's the family tab. Next is the person view. And here you can see the tasks, the facts for that person. There's also a view for a timeline and relationships for that person. And down below, we've got notes about that person, any media related to that person, and then any tasks that we have created for that person. So if I go up here and use this little mini pedigree view, I can click on my father and you'll see there's a task here for ordering a birth certificate, and I need to do that online. And so if we look in here in the timeline, or in the facts, we can select a, at a specific event, his death, for instance. Click in the timeline. That one's highlighted with this gray here. And we can see these are the sources associated with that event. And then these are the relationships for this person that's selected. We can also get a, an index of people here so we can select people on this list as well. Or navigate with the pedigree view. On this menu, on the people view, there's this person menu item that's been added. So here are some of the common things that you can do from the menu, like merging individuals. The next workspace is the places workspace. This is a workspace that allows you to view either places or migration paths for people. And so over here, similar to the index of people on the people workspace, you've got an index of places within the family tree file. And then information about that place, and then any people that are associated with that place. So if I select Antioch Township for me, you'll see here are a list of people who are associated with that. And you can dial these open to see what fact is associated with this place for that person. 
Now if you click this list by drop down and change this to person, this is where you can start to see the migration paths. And so I have John Calvin selected when we were on the people workspace, and so he's selected here as the person. So I want to quickly show you how to do a migration path. So we've got John Calvin Sayer selected here. And if I select other events in his life, it will start drawing lines on this map to show me this green one is his birthplace and the red, dark red one is his death place. And you can see all the different places in his life. So you can see he moved from New York to Michigan and stayed and died in Michigan. Like people, there is a place menu item, so there's some things you can do specifically with places that are added to the menu. The next workspace is the media workspace. This shows you all your different kinds of media, including photos and stories, and also shows you history, the most recently used media. And you can filter this list by different media types. So you can do uh, media category. You can list it by media category. You can list it by the source title, or you can list it by the person. And so this is how we would say, just show me the photos that I have. And if I select by source title, and I select one of these sources, it'll show me the media that I have for that source. If I click the Detail tab, then this is where I can view this image, including zooming in. This is the information that I captured about it. You can edit it here. And this down here is where you can see notes and links for that source item. You can also bring up an index here, just like on the people. There's a media menu item. The next workspace is the sources workspace. And this is where you can see a list of all your sources. And then for a specific source, you can see who is linked to that source, any notes about the source, and any media associated with that source. There's also a source item on the menu. The next workspace is the Publish workspace, and this is where you go to create reports and charts and books. And so down here on the left are the different publication types that you can create, charts and reports. If we tab through, if we click through these, you can see this shows you the different kinds. And to create one of those, you just click on the one that you want to create and click the button over there. So these are the books, these are some reports and charts. Once again, you've got your pedigree view up here and you can select individuals here to be the uh, selected person uh, for some of those reports. There's also a detail tab here. And so rather than clicking on the item in the list like this specific report, if you have one selected, like back over here on the collection, I had pedigree chart selected. And when I, so when I click the detail tab, it brings up that pedigree chart for the selected person. And the last workspace is called web search. And this is where you can search Ancestry.com and other online sources from within Family Tree Maker. You don't even have to leave Family Tree Maker. So here you can see on the left, are the different locations you can use. Ancestry selected right now. And this is the familiar search window from Ancestry. So you can use this to create searches and look at results and merge the things that you find into your tree. Similarly, you can click on another site and search genealogy.com, for instance, or even Google, just by clicking the search button.